I had the Rampage 4, that was my last board, and I had an i7 920D0 on there. Fantastic motherboard then, fantastic motherboard now. Um, I don't have a sound card, this is my first rig that hasn't had a sound card in it. I had the HT Omega Clara Plus, which was really nice. The uh, sound quality is pretty good on this board for integrated. They have a separate ground and the PCB is isolated. They use ELNA capacitors, which are pretty good. They're on a lot of audio equipment. And the TI op amp, well, uh, not a brown burr or anything. It's a pretty nice little op amp. Um, sound quality is pretty great. I haven't had any issues with noise, any hum or static or anything, and it sounded decently warm. And uh, it's a pretty good match for pretty much anybody out there. The ALC 1150 codec um, is really great. I think on paper, if you look at some of the uh, PDFs out there, you'll see that it's actually better than the uh, Creative Core Audio solution um, in terms of signal-to-noise ratio and all of the important measurements that matter to uh, audio listeners. Of course, you're going to be spending some CPU cycles on, uh, you know, that Realtek chip. It doesn't have a quad-core processor on board that uses one of your PCIe lanes like the, uh, you know, Core 3D Creative does. But, you know, I'm, I'm fine with the trade-off. I think it sounds great. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. I definitely recommend it. And don't be hesitant to switch to some of the new onboard audio that's out there. It's light years ahead of what we've had to deal with in the past. Um, so again, beautiful color scheme with this board, matches my build. I really like the audio quality, uh, you know, better than the Core 3D, really reliable. There's a rumor going on on the internet, and I think that it's being spread by people that uh, are affiliated with Gigabyte and ASRock um, because they're paying them to say it, in my opinion. And people are spreading rumors that the ASUS boards of this generation had, you know, like a VRM recall, their power stage is bad, tons of nonsense. Um, there's a really good thread on Overclock.net um, where a few guys break down all of the power stage components on this generation of boards, all the Haswell boards, and uh, Asus is doing, they've done very well. They have some of the best boards, they're using high quality VRMs, um, you know, the components that they're putting on these boards are great. And this board for me, I got it when it first came out and was available on Newegg, has been absolutely flawless and has been a fantastic overclocker for both casual and some of the little bit more extreme overclocking I've done. So it's not substantiated, in my opinion, that rumor, and I would honestly ignore it and go out and do some research for yourself on that. Fan Expert 3 or Fan Expert 2 um, is really cool. It's just all the other ASUS software is really terrible. Um, it's it's real bad. Um, I had one driver. Uh, it was either the Intel MEI or some random ACPI uh, power driver that it, I couldn't install it manually by itself. But as soon as I put the disk in and installed the ASUS suite, the uh, the unknown device went away in the device manager. So I had no choice but to install all the ASUS software, and it's it's really bad. It has an auto startup that's annoying. You have to, each time you start up, disable a little side dock that they have that pops out on the side of the screen when you're in Windows. And the worst part about it is, you know, adding insult to injury, um, their uninstaller is just totally broken. Uh, absolutely, completely broken. Um, beyond belief. Oh, there's the Tweaker's Paradise. A lot of cool stuff in there. Um, if you want to uninstall, you need to run their uninstaller, reboot, You'll probably get errors about ASUS log files missing. And then you'll need to actually go in, elevate your command prompt, and run an SC delete command on each of the services that show up in your services.msc manager and delete all ASUS services manually from the command prompt. They'll have an ASUS fan control, um, a few other, I think there's about three or four services you need to manually delete that the uninstaller did not remove. And then after you do that, you need to actually go through your uh, scheduled tasks on Windows 7 or 8 and remove the ASUS tasks and reboot and run a registry clean uh, to remove any ASUS references and then all your startup errors will go away.